Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we're going to paint a cute little haunted mushroom house. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and then check out the video description below for a full list of materials for today's painting. Now let's get started. Today, as always, I am starting with a 12 by 16 inch Frederick's Red Label canvas fresh out of the package. I have not gessoed it or prepared it in any way. Now I based today's painting kind of on this image that I got off of Pixabay and I've left a link in the video description below to where you can download this image as well. And I picked it because I thought the idea of a haunted little mushroom house was really cute. So on my little Halloween plate, I have some Mars Black, some raw sienna and titanium white. And the raw sienna, you can really substitute any brown you like for the raw sienna any brown at all. I'm going to start with my one inch flat brush. I'm going to wet it in my jar and wipe it off on the edge pretty good. So I'm going to just kind of loosely pick up both of these colors. I'm not going to really get too concerned, you know, whether my color is more brown or more black. I'm just going to pick some up, both of them, a good amount of paint. and just a little bit of white. Every time I go back for more paint, my mixture will be a little bit different. At this point, I know I wanna keep it a little bit darker toward the top and then I'll get ever so slightly lighter toward the bottom. I'm not gonna to worry too much about mixing my colors perfectly on my canvas even. Picked up a little extra white that time, I think. Heavy pressure to lay paint down, see that? And light pressure there to kind of blend them together, get rid of brush marks. Maybe I'll go a little browner on this side. You could even just do this in black and white if you like. Or Payne's gray, you know, any color you like. I really love monochromatic paintings, so I do those quite a bit, but you could add any colors you like to it. You know, you don't have to do it just in, you know, a, a solid color scheme like I'm doing. Do whatever you like. Just smooth out some of those brush marks. A little more on the brown side. See, I'm just worrying about getting the paint down first, and then I can go back with that light pressure. Hear the difference there? You know, from that is laying paint down to that's just kind of blending it. If I get a spot that I think is too one color or the other, I can just pick up, you know, whatever color I feel like is missing and add it back into it. It's so like right there, I feel like that's just way too gray. Too much black, not enough brown. So I'm just gonna come in and grab a little more of my brown and just lay it in there. Now, I'm not gonna worry about taking this all the way down to the bottom of my canvas because I know where my ground is gonna be. But if you're not sure where you want your ground to be, then go ahead and take it all the way to the bottom. It's not gonna hurt anything, you know, to paint the black over top of these lighter colors, even if the lighter colors are still wet. But you don't wanna, you know, have to put your ground up higher than you really want it because you've gotta cover up some white from the canvas. I'm going to go back just here and there and kind of touch up my colors a little bit. Just kind of change them a little wherever I feel like, wherever I feel like it's needed. Just picking up smaller amounts of paint and mostly dusting. I'm not really getting too heavy handed with the pressure here. Maybe just to lay it down and then dust it out. See, just a tiny bit of white, 
Let's just lighten this area up. I do want it a little bit lighter at the very bottom. Just a little bit. I want to keep it pretty dark up at the top, especially on this side, so that the roof of my little haunted mushroom house stands out nicely. I think that's good. So this is pretty much like my smoky background technique that I showed you quite a while ago, the flat, the flat brush version. You could do it with the, the cloud brush and kind of scrub it as well if you like. Now let's add our ground. I'm not gonna worry about cleaning off my brush. I'm just gonna come in and grab some black. Just black on its own because we're gonna add all the other colors to it later. Decide where you want the high part of your hill and I want mine pretty high, roughly halfway up the canvas. And I think I want it pretty low on this side. It's so maybe about there. And I'm just gonna loosely, it's not really gonna show this line once we put our grass in but I want a pretty organic shape. So I'm just kind of loosely sketching it in there. And then we can fill that all in with black. Again, I'm not worried if it's not solid black. If little hints of that white and brown can show and lighten it a little. Just black. Don't worry about brush directionality or any of that here. When you start having kind of a hard time getting your paint into the texture of your canvas, just pick up a little bit of water on your brush. That's what I just did. And now it's going on nice and smooth. Okay, I think I'm gonna let this dry for a bit and then we'll be right back. All right, now my canvas is dry, so the next thing I'm gonna do is sketch on my little mushroom haunted house. I am gonna use my General's White Chalk Pencil and make it look like whatever you like. It doesn't have to look exactly like mine. I'm gonna start with the top of my mushroom house. We'll kinda come up here. It's roughly gonna look like my reference, reference image, but it might be a little different too. I'm gonna take that off the edge because I think that makes it look more interesting. And then kind of this way. Anything I don't like here, I can change once I start filling it in. Now the lip of the mushroom, I'll bring it up kind of high, maybe not that high, well, we'll see. And I'm gonna bring it down and kind of around so it meets up with that edge there. Since this is an old haunted mushroom, it doesn't have to be, you know, perfectly straight and even, any of that. Now the side of the house, I wanna give it a bit of a curve, just cause that's what I like. So I'm gonna arc it just a little bit. I started about an inch up into the roof of the mushroom and then roughly an inch or so into the ground. And same thing over on this side. Let's see, maybe I'll bring that over to the left just a little bit more. There we go. And then right here is where it meets. And that's really all there is to drying our mushroom. Now I'm gonna fill it all in. To fill in my mushroom, I'm gonna use my half inch bright and I did wet this in my jar. And just like the background and the, the ground, I'm not gonna worry about getting an exact specific color mixture and you shouldn't either. So if your mixture is more black or more brown than mine, that's okay. It really doesn't matter. I'm just gonna mix the black and the brown together and get some white. I want a color that's a little bit lighter than the background. All right, let's see how that works out. And I'm gonna use the edge of my brush. Remember to use the edge of your brush when you're drawing a crisp line. Don't do it sideways like that because watch what happens. 
I can push a little harder and see how wide my brush gets. And so you can lose control of your line. Doing it this way, it doesn't matter how hard I push, the line is not gonna go out any farther. Once you've got your crisp line on there, then you can go sideways if you need to. I'm gonna fill in each section individually so that I don't, you know, just end up with a big gray blob without the distinction of the, you know, the underside or the top of the mushroom. And I'm kind of going to make my mushroom almost look a little bit like stone. So it's okay if there's some variation in my colors. Let's go a little bit darker for the underside. It's not a whole lot different than the background, but really that doesn't matter. Not right now, it doesn't. I'm gonna pick up a little extra black because I know right here, I'm gonna have that be pretty dark. No, it's not pure black. There's still a hint of brown and white in there. See, I'm just gonna lightly dust that out right there so I don't have a hard line for the shadow. And let's add another little shadow area right over here. blend that out. Again, please don't stress exactly what colors you have going on in here. This is just the underpainting for your mushroom. All right, let's go just a hint lighter, uh, maybe a good amount lighter. And keep a little extra water on my brush. Nice light color. And we'll start filling in the main body of the mushroom. Don't worry about what the bottom looks like. It's all going to be covered up. Now, as I move over to the to the right, I'm gonna start darkening it just a little bit. But again, this is just the underpainting. So really what I'm doing by darkening it here is just reminding myself that I want it darker over on this side. If it's easier for you to just paint it one solid color and then worry about shading it later, that's okay too. Whatever you need to do. Like I said, that's just a reminder for me that it's gonna be darker over here. I'm just gonna make sure it's brought down far enough because I can cover up the bottom of it if it's down too far, but if it's not, if it's up too far, then I won't be able to cover it and I might have my mushroom looking like it's sitting right on the, the back there and I don't want that. We can actually go ahead and start doing some shadows and highlights now. A little bit of a lighter color right in here. And I'm just dashing it. Zoom me in there a little bit so you can see. Now, I'm not worried about brush strokes. I'm not worried about you know, the canvas texture showing, because all of that's gonna kind of help me get that stone look that I want. And because that color is all still wet, it's blending nicely on there, and that's what I want. 
Just keep adding little bits of your highlight and then dashing it in. So what I'm doing is I'm taking just a little smear of paint. Do you see that? There's no blob. It's just a smear. And then I'll lay it down somewhere. And see, now that smear is gone. That's all the paint I picked up. Now I can come back nice and light and just kind of dash it. Move it around. See the pressure I'm putting on my brush? I'm not gripping it. I'm not, you know, I'm not holding my brush like that. It's really just kind of balanced. Just kind of balanced on my hand. And that helps me avoid, you know, putting way too much pressure and really blending this into oblivion or laying down too much paint. I do want to make sure that this edge is nice and bright because that's going to create a good contrast between the darker edge here and the sky and the edge of the mushroom. Let's go nice and dark for the other side, but still mixing some brown in there. In no part of this painting am I going to have any one of these three colors just pure and solid by itself. I will always have a mixture of all three to some extent on my brush. So quite dark. It's okay if you can't tell the difference really between the, the shadow area here and the shadow area on the, the main body of the mushroom. That is perfectly okay. Just a smear, lay it down, dash it out. See all different directions with my dashes so I don't end up with, you know, patterned lines in there. I don't want patterns. Just a hint of a deeper shadow right there up at the top. You know, I've actually decided that I don't have enough distance over here. So I'm going to bring the edge of my mushroom out just a little bit farther. See, you can always make changes. Never be afraid to make changes. I'm not worried about that not being the same color. That doesn't matter at all. A little extra water. All right, much better. Just get our dark shadow back in here. So let's go ahead and start putting some shadows and highlights on the cap of our mushroom. Now remember that we want our mushroom to be a little bit darker at the top than at the bottom here on the bottom edge, and that will help that seem farther in the distance. I think for now anyway, I'm pretty happy with that color. So I think I'm gonna leave it and just focusing on brightening up the bottom edge. So a little bit of my brown black mixture, just a little bit and some white, a nice pale color, very, very light. We'll start with that and see how that goes. Right to the edge, just gonna worry about laying it down on the edge first. And then just break it up. And that cap is still a little wet and that's okay. Just helping me get a blend. Guys, don't use too much paint here. I would say that 90% of the time when, well, let's not say 90%, maybe, maybe 60% of the time when I talk to people who say they're having a hard time blending, a, a lot of the time it looks like it's because they're picking up way too much paint and so then they've got this big glob of paint that they're trying to blend but because the paint is so thick they end up you know painting over other things so just work in small sections 
You know, if you just pick up a little bit, you can come back and get more. You know, if that's the only amount of section you can cover, that's fine. Go ahead and blend that. And then come back and get more if you need. But if I were to come in here and pick up, you know, a, a, that's quite a bit of paint. I'm That paint is going to cover the vast majority of this. And I don't want to cover that much of it. So I'm just going to work in small sections. See, it's just a smear. There are no globs. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure on my brush. Let's go a little bit lighter than that. See, light pressure. Light, light pressure. And then break it up. And lightly bring it up the cap of my mushroom a bit. And if I have a line that's a little bit too aggressive, I can just kind of tap it with my finger. Okay, to help you with your blending, I moved you in there really close so you can exactly see the pressure I'm putting on my brush. Now notice again, how smooth and flat my brush is. There are no globs of paint. Notice how much my brush is bending. I'm just gonna touch to the edge there. See, I'm just laying down that little bit of paint, just right where I want it to find that edge. And then with the same amount of pressure, see I'm coming back and just kind of pulling that little glob of paint, that little smear of paint, see that? My brush is not bending, notice that. Very light pressure. If you have to put your hand on your canvas like I am, that's okay. And then you can wipe away any extra lines with your finger. That's always okay. Let's do that again. So I'm gonna lay some down here and then break it up ever so lightly. All right, let's keep going. Now remember that A, this is a little haunted house, and B, it's a mushroom, and C, on mine anyway, I want it to look like stone. So I don't need smooth blends, you know? You can be a little creepy looking, you can be a little jagged looking, I can have some hard lines in my blends, I can see some brush strokes, canvas texture, all of that. I think it's kind of nice to have a mixture of the two. So maybe in some areas I'll have some, some very smooth blends. And then in some other areas I'll have some really, you know, jagged, some jagged lines, a little bit harder lines. All that is going to help give the mushroom a little bit of texture and personality. If you feel like you get too dark or too light in any one area, you can easily take care of it. Easily, easily. In fact, let's say that I do that up at the top. Clearly, I don't want it that light at the top. So that's fine, I just smeared it out so it's not thick. Grab a little bit of my darker color. There we go. Just dash right back over top of it, just like I'm laying down the lighter color at the bottom. Look, and now it's gone. So don't worry if you, you know, make a mistake. That's fine. You'll just get to practice at, you know, color correction. There's nothing wrong with that. I might even come back and just add a couple areas that are just a hint darker here and there because I feel like that'll be fun. A little dark spot right there. Maybe even just a little bit of a darker spot here and what that's going to kind of do is help that feel recessed. So maybe like the cap, it's not perfectly smooth and round. It kind of dips in and out. And then if you decide you don't like that, just add your light color back over it. You can really keep kind of pushing and pulling these shadows and highlights as much as you like. You know, if you feel like the whole thing just gets away from you, let it dry, come back to it later. I 
Okay, I think that's good for now on the top. I know I'm gonna come back and lighten it up a little bit more, but let's go ahead and work on the underside here. Okay, I've pretty much got my dark shadows in there already. So we'll just kind of go with a, a mid-tone and I'm gonna lay it in here and just kind of test it, see what that color's like. I think we can go a little bit lighter. See, just little dashes. I am putting a tiny bit more pressure on my brush than I did on the cap because I'm not really, you know, doing like delicate shading under here. I kind of feel like I like the idea of this underside being a little bit more rough. So see, I'm kind of dashing like that, almost flat, just like little dashes, and then come in and kind of wipe it away with my finger. Experiment and see what kind of brush stroke is easiest for you and gives you the result that you're looking for. You know, if my little punch type dashes like that don't do it for you, then don't do it. Let's even go lighter. Nice light color. Maybe not quite as light as the top. Right up to the edge. It's okay if your edges blend in in a few places. A little extra water. There we go. We'll leave that spot a little darker, I think, right there on the edge. So when I'm doing highlights like this, and I keep bringing things like this up because it's something that I still see a lot of you struggling with, or at least you feel like you're struggling with it. So when I'm doing highlights like this, I am not aiming to achieve the perfect highlight and shadow all at once. What I'm doing is I'm just kind of playing and seeing what feels right, what looks right. You know, I can, I can totally come in here and say, Let's experiment with this dark color. Let's see what it looks like if I leave it dark right here. Okay, that is an experiment. We're gonna see what it looks like if I leave it dark right there. But I already know, just because I've painted this a few times, that I don't want it dark right there. I want a nice bright spot there. But that's okay, because I'm, I'm just experimenting. Let's get some more light. We're gonna dash it on there and see how that looks. If it's too dark, I can add some more light. If it's too light, then I can make it dark again. It really is okay to go over it as many times as you like to find what looks right to you. That is perfectly okay. The one thing you don't wanna do, this is what you don't wanna do. You don't wanna come in here and do this and dab, 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 wipe, 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 in this whole one section. Oh, now I have a hard line and now I have to wipe that out. Oh, now I, you know, and see, it's just spreading and I just keep wiping in the same area and pretty soon, see, I just have this area that's just flat now. There's no dimension in there. I've taken over my shadow. It's just a solid gray color. It looks very flat but like look over here where it's got a little bit more texture to it, a little bit more nuance. So I do that to show you the benefit of putting it down and leaving it alone and overworking it. So this is overworked. If you happen to overwork it, it's okay, I promise. You can get it back. So that's still wet, but I am gonna get it back. So I have my dark color. I'm gonna plop it down just like I did up on the top, soft, pressure. I'm just pulling it back into that section. I'm not overworking it again. Okay. If I feel like the paint is too thick and I have no choice but to overwork it because my colors keep spreading, that's fine. Just let it dry. Come back to it later. But see, look, now it's fixed. 
A little darker there. And let's really start pumping the highlights up. I want a few areas under here that are nice and bright. And this is one of them. I don't want that dark. Notice I am kind of leaving a little bit of the edge. So this line right here between the top and the bottom. Cause you know, if this is stone, you might be able to see that really strongly in some parts, but then in other parts, see, I let them go ahead and blend together. All of that just helps with dimension, texture, and you know, just makes it look a little bit more realistic. If you have super crisp lines between them or they completely blend in all the way, then I think it kind of, it just makes it look a little bit more phony. And clearly, I mean, little haunted mushroom houses aren't actually a thing, so we don't have to worry about it being too realistic, but you get the point, I think. Let's go ahead and really brighten this up. So I am only picking up white, but as you can see on my plate, it is not pure white because I still have all those colors in my brush. I like to tap on here because again, it helps me kind of get that stone texture that I'm going for. ready to move on to the body of the mushroom. I know I'm going to come back and touch up a little bit in here later. Okay, it's time to add some shadows and highlights to the body of our mushroom. Now you can do this a couple of ways. If you like, you can do it just like we highlighted the cap, you know, just with kind of the little blotchy bits to make it look like stone. Or you can do it the way I'm going to do it, which is to kind of make it look like maybe some wood or something. To give it that kind of scratchy wood look that I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna use my old number eight filbert. And I'm using this brush because it's all puffy and really quite destroyed. And so that's gonna give me a little bit of kind of a scumbled look rather than straight lines, which I don't want. I don't want it to look real tidy. So again, I did wet it in my jar and I'm gonna get a little mixture of both the black and the brown. Doesn't matter if it leans more one way or the other. And I think to start just a little bit of white, I'm going to start fairly dark. I'm just using the tip of my brush. Just kind of like that and just kind of scrub up and down. My brush is not flat. It's just like this. Okay, it's not like that. It's just like that. I'm just using the tip almost like it's a pen or something. I'm not worried about that color. That is clearly not what color I want this, but if we work in layers, we get a little bit more dimension. It's gonna make it look like old wood or something. I'm gonna go just a little bit darker because I'm gonna start moving over to this direction. Notice I'm not trying to cover all of that first layer of color I made. I'm just using that as a guide. So I know that in the darker areas, I wanna use a darker paint. And in the lighter areas, a lighter paint. Or I wanna end up with a lighter look. All right, let's go a little lighter. I'm 
I'm going to take just a hint of this lighter color over into the darker area. Because just having a flat, you know, solid color, I don't think is very interesting. A little bit more white. Make sure that edge is nice and bright. There we go. Now you can start to see how those layers all build toward giving it some texture and a little bit of interest. And even come in and get quite a dark color. Very, very dark. Scratch some of that in. And just like I always tell you when we're doing shadows and highlights, do as many layers as you need to. Just don't overwork it. Don't try to blend your colors. Just scratch them on in these little streaky lines. Let the layers beneath show or get covered completely. Whatever happens, just don't try to force it. You know, if I feel like that covered way too much, or maybe I want it to be a little bit lighter, I'm not going to sit there and try and go over it and over it and over it. You know, I'm just going to move on and make a mental note that I want it lighter right here. And I'll add that lighter in little bits. It was too light there, so I just took a little of that dark right over top of it. I think I'm about done with this part. I'm just going to make sure it's nice and dark right there. The top, kind of scrub that down just a little bit. Maybe a little bit darker here at the base. Okay, now we're gonna start doing our grasses. And to do my grasses, I'm gonna use my fan brush. Now, just real quick, I know that my mushroom, especially through this area, is not light enough for me. I'm gonna want some really bright pop highlights here. However, the reason I stopped is because that paint is still wet, so I'm not gonna get a bright white. A lot of you have asked me, why does it seem like my bright, like my white highlights fade into the back and I can't get white highlights. Part of that is from adding it on top of wet paint. As the white paint dries, it becomes a little translucent. It kind of absorbs some of those paint colors that are already wet. So we'll let this dry and then we can get brighter highlights. So we'll come back to that. Now I'm gonna wet my fan brush, but my fan brush does hold quite a bit of water. So even just wiping it on the edge like that is gonna leave it still way too wet. So I'm just going to take a paper towel and I'm just going to kind of touch it to the paper towel. I'm not wiping it. I'm not trying to dry it. I'm just kind of touching it. To start, I'm just going to get a brown-black mixture a little closer on the side of black because my brown is pretty light. So it will noticeably be a lighter color if I mix it 50-50 with the brown. So we'll just pull some of those out, mostly black. And then remember how we mix paint on a fan brush is to squidge it back and forth. Just kind of squidge it. If you wipe too much water off, just get a little extra. You don't want the paint flowing, but you want it wet enough that, you know, that your grasses are individual blades and not puffy scrubs. So there, I've got a quite dark color. I'm mostly going to be using the corner of my brush, particularly up on the edge where I'm going to see a lot of it. So by the corner, I mean, I'm gonna take the corner of it like that and kind of scrape it up like that. See, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm just kind of going like that. See, and then I can get some nice randomly looking grasses. Kind of take care around the edge of your mushroom. There we go. If it starts to get a little too fuzzy for your liking, just dunk it into a little bit of water 
and remix that water into your brush. Then when you come back, you'll get a little bit more of kind of a bladed look, see that? Make your grasses go in different directions. Some can be taller, some can be shorter. I think the most important thing is just cover up that line. What you don't want is to see like that so you can still see the line. Completely cover that line. And look, even sometimes I go right up on the edge. See that? You get some little, just different interesting shapes. See how I let my brush, I start here. And as I go, it ends up turning that way. Just really like the super random look. There we go. Now because I'm gonna have a trail of stairs here, I'm only gonna focus on one side of the mushroom at a time. So I'm not gonna worry about over on this side just yet. We're just gonna work on over here. Then we'll do our stairs. Then we'll work on this side. I'm gonna bring this down a little. Maybe I'll add a hint more brown into there because like I said, this brown is so light. See that? I can easily see that color on the black. I want to keep the brightest part of my grasses right here by the stairs. So I'm gonna keep everything else pretty dark. Be really careful that you're just kind of laying down your grasses and you're not, you know, overworking it into the next section. Cause then you'll just end up with kind of blobular glass <laughs> grasses that blend in with each other. And yes, I just said blobular. That's one of my favorite words. All right, now I'm gonna add just a hint of white. See, just a tiny little poke, kind of mix it in there, little bits at a time. I'm not looking for a dramatically lighter color, just an ever so slightly color, ever so slightly lighter color. Let's start up here again. See that? Very subtly lighter. I'm not worrying about covering all of this dark color. It blends in nicely and it creates a nice shadow color for my grasses. So that's okay. Let's go a little lighter. A little bit more water. My brush is kind of getting dry there. Super light pressure because my brush is quite wet. I'm not worrying about where my stairs are gonna be just yet. Just getting my color on there. Not bad, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna poke into the white. See that? Just kind of tap it so I've got a little bit right on the edge and right here where I know I'm gonna want it quite light I'm just gonna scratch in a bit if it's too light that's okay I'll just let it dry and I can add some darker color over it later or maybe it will end up being just fine once I've got the stairs in maybe it will look great just right here overlapping the base of my little house. Now we can start working on our steps. I'm gonna go back to my half inch bright for this part and I'm just gonna get a color. So long as I can see it against this area, it doesn't really matter. That's quite a dark area, so I think I'm gonna go pretty light. I'm gonna start right here in the middle and I'll zoom in here in just a second. I'm gonna use the tip of my brush right where I'm gonna have the front door so I'm just kind of sketching side to side, overlapping my grass, that's perfectly okay. Where my step is, is more important to me than where the grass is. I'm gonna bring it out just a little bit. Bring it down, I mean. I didn't bring it down very far. Picked up just a little hint of white. And right from the edge, I'm just gonna pull it down just about a quarter of an inch. Don't get too precise here. Don't get too worried about the way that looks. 
Okay, that's going to be the edge of our step. A little bit extra white. And I'm going to scratch in just like some highlights to the top. It might be too wet. I might have to come back later and do that. There we go. Now I'll zoom you in for the rest of them. I did that zoomed out because I wanted you to see how it fit in relation to the rest of the ground, the size and shape of the house, etc. So again, a nice light color, maybe a little extra water. You just want to take care that the shape of your rock is way more narrow this way than it is this way. If it's circular, it's going to look flat. It's going to look like a wall rather than a flat surface. So I know when we look at this, that kind of tells our eye this rock is almost as wide this way as it is this way. Maybe a little bit more narrow, but that's just the way perspective works. So if you make it like that and like that, it's going to seem flat. So here, I'll show you what I mean on the back of my plate, okay? So here's what I did. It's about that long and about that. Whoops, there. <laughs> Sorry, you couldn't see that. About that long and about that wide. And then it's got the little face on it to say that's how thick the rock is, okay? If you do your rock like this, Even with the, th the thickness like that, it's gonna seem much more flat. It's gonna seem like it's facing you rather than laying flat. So just make sure it's very, very narrow compared to the width. All right, let's do another one. It doesn't matter where you place it. I'm gonna have mine kind of angling off. I'm gonna start just below that first rock and I'm gonna pull it over here. about like that. A little hint of white and pull down the, the edge to say how thick it is. And you may not be able to really see that once we add the grasses, but that's okay. On the off chance that you can see it, it's going to help it seem like it's got a little bit of thickness. We'll just indicate a little bit of highlights on the top, but I'm not going to spend too much time with that because it's still pretty wet so it's hard to get a good highlight and our next one again pulling it over farther so my rocks are getting a little bit you know wider this way but they're also getting wider that way which helps keep the perspective I notice I'm not getting too worried about making exact shapes. I want these to seem like old pieces of slate or something so they can be very jagged and very broken. A little hint of a highlight. And I think I can fit one more in there. Please don't worry about what the edges of these look like at all. They're, the chances are good that you are not going to be able to see that because we are going to add some more grasses around the edge. So if there's something that you're looking at and you're like, oh, I just hate the edge of that rock or the color that I did or the shape, whatever. If it's too big, plan on covering it with some grass later. Okay, I think that my first step is dry enough that I can start adding some highlights and shadows to it. I'm gonna go back to my number eight filbert because it's kind of scrubby and ugly again, but whatever you want to use is perfectly fine. I just got a little hint of water. I'm gonna make sure I've got some of that black brown on my brush, but it's not very much. And some white. I'm just gonna come in here with the tip of my brush and just kind of scrub it. Don't cover the whole thing. Really don't worry about what it looks like. 
It's just an old piece of slate. It doesn't have to look like anything in particular. Just got a couple darker colors to throw in there. Don't overwork it. I think that's pretty good. I really just wanted them lighter than what I had. I'm kind of focusing the lighter right around the edges, particularly back here just to make sure that I don't lose those edges in the grass. Very, very simple. These rocks are just super, super simple. Little hints of the darker color, kind of fun once in a while. And I think that's it. My rocks are done. I'm gonna go back to my fan brush and I'm just gonna kinda of touch up my highlights around here and bring a little bit of grasses in between my rocks. So, I feel like I lost some of my lighter colors. So we're gonna mix up a little bit of a lighter color. Remember to keep a hint of water in there so you can get some definition and don't overwork it. See what light pressure I'm using? Tiny little blades of grass. I'll bring a little bit over here. Just darker and lighter as you as you feel like you need it. I get some darker, and right here in between my grasses or in between my rocks, and I'm going to bring it up. See how it overlaps my my rock that also helps to kind of push the rock down and say that it's flat. It's got some grasses growing up over it. Don't be afraid to overlap that rock. I promise you that if you try to keep your grass away from your rocks, your rocks are gonna look more, more, um, flat, but I don't mean laying down on the ground flat. I mean kind of like a wall flat. They're not gonna really seem like they're part of the scene. So don't be afraid to get in there. Light, light pressure. Scratch in a few lighter bits back there. a little brown in there. I just think it's nice to have the variation. You know, some grasses that are a little more black and white, some that are maybe just a little bit more brown. Okay, I think that's good for now. I am gonna come back and put some bright pops in the grass, but we're gonna do all of our bright pops at the end. Now we can start working on our grasses on this side. So same thing, very dark to start, just the corner of my brush. Completely obscure that line in the ground. Take care not to go over your mushroom house back here, but as we get down here, absolutely go over top of it a bit. Between your mushroom house and the step, bring that up over the edge. Get that right over the edge of your step there. Pull in a little more brown so we can get that slightly lighter color. And let's work a little bit of it into here. nice and dark back here and I'm, I'm not gonna put a lot of definition back here so I don't really care what that part looks like 
it's just pretty much going to be dark in the corner. We can start lightening everything up a little bit, but again, I'm going to keep my lightest area closer to the steps. Little extra water. My, my paint was too dry. There we go. white like we did before kind of tap it into the end oh, I had a little bit of a glob there that I didn't realize I had that's okay I'm gonna take a bit of that over into here I'm just kind of tapping almost looks like some little wheat tops or something Super overgrown and crazy looking in here. Let's just kind of punch our highlights in here in the mushroom house and then we'll add the doors, the door and windows. So it's mostly white, but there's a tiny hint of those other colors in there. Still just kind of scratching them on lightly. If I happen to cover any grasses, I can add those back in later. Grasses are so easy to add back in, so please don't paint around them. A little darker color to kick some of that back a bit. Much better. A little more white. And we'll just highlight a bit up in here. Again, it still has that black and brown in it. Never pure white. Pure white is really going to stand out way too much. Just like if I were to use pure black anywhere or pure brown, it would just stand out way too much. Just kind of scumbling that color on. Using a pretty good amount of pressure, so I'm kind of scrubbing a little bit. now back to my half inch nice dark color and we'll add the door don't worry if your door's not straight it can be curved it can be completely wonky it can be anything at all a little bit of a lighter color to fill in this bottom area And then I'm just going to lightly dust them together. Let's get a hint of white on the edge and just kind of pop a highlight down the side here. I'm going to go back to my filbert, use whatever you like to do the round windows or you could do Little rectangle windows if you like. Just gonna do little round ones because I like that they kind of look like eyes. Kind of looks like he's yelling. <laughs> and it's okay if your windows aren't the same size. It's okay if they're not evenly spaced. Don't worry about, you know, perfection. Little extra white. 
lighten it up right there. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a darker spot. I'm just gonna punch some highlights on these stairs again. Sometimes you don't know if it's going to be light enough or dark enough until you know you see it in context with everything around it. And I felt like my stairs were light enough, but then once I got the grass in there, I felt like they definitely weren't. I definitely couldn't see them as much as I wanted to. Just a couple pops of white. And we can do our sign. So back to my half inch, mostly black. There's a tiny hint of that brown in there. I'm gonna decide where I want my sign placed. And if you wanna sketch it first with your chalk, you are more than welcome to. I want the wood of my sign to be very jagged looking. So I'm just gonna sketch it on like that. Notice I don't have a very clear cut rectangle. It's very, very jagged and it's at an angle, it's crooked. Just makes it look like old boards a little bit more. Let's get some white. There's some little highlights on it. Don't overwork it. I think that the, the brush stroke marks help it look like old wood. I just want to break up any patterns. There we go. Let's do the post. So really the same thing. Just kind of touch and pull to the side. And let it be nice and jagged. Add a little more white there so you can see it. There we go. I think I'm going to let that dry. It's pretty wet before we write our words on it. In the meantime, I'll finish up the door. Maybe I'll just highlight that just a little bit more. I'm going to take my number zero round, get some white. Maybe just mix a tiny hint of that color in there again so it's not pure white. I'm just going to add a little hint of a highlight right around the top edges of my windows. Nothing too fancy or specific. And if you like, you can even come back with some black, again, with just a hint of that brown in there. Maybe we'll make like a a little crack or something on our window. Cracks are very much like doing tree branches. In fact, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna take off this whole bottom edge of the glass on this one. We'll just say that whole window's kind of broken out there. A little more of a super light color. Let's just lighten this a bit. This was way too dark. I want it to seem like very old faded wood. If it's too dark, then our words won't show up on it. There we go. I like that much better. Let's just kind of zing the highlight down the edge there. You can write whatever you like 
on the sign. I think I'm gonna stick with go away. I really like that. Zip you in there close. Don't try to make the handwriting too tidy. It's a, it's a scary old sign. Maybe even do it with your non-dominant hand if you have super neat handwriting. I have, I don't have the best handwriting. So I'm just gonna let my handwriting kind of do its thing and be messy. If you end up with way too much space on the end, you can just fill it with a lot of exclamation points. <laughs> if you ended up not planning out the placement of your words enough and they were kind of squished, I think that that's okay too. One last thing, I'm gonna get some white that is mixed ever so slightly with those colors, but it's almost pure white. And very loosely, I'm not even gonna put my hand on my canvas because I want it to be kind of messy. I'm just gonna kind of maybe indicate a little messy spider web here. I'll give it little bits that are kind of drooping down. It's kind of gross, a little gross spider web. Keep a little extra water on there. There we go. And maybe a little bit on this side. It's Halloween, right? We gotta have gross little spider webs. And I think it's done, so I'm gonna sign it. And there's your cute and creepy haunted mushroom house. And once I was finished painting and the paint was dry, I just took a damp brush and the chalk just wiped away. I hope you enjoyed painting this with me and getting into the Halloween spirit for the season. If you're a Halloween fan like I am, make sure that you're subscribed and then click the little bell notification icon so that you can get notifications this season. I have some really fun things coming up for Halloween that you won't wanna miss. Thank you as always to my sponsor Frederick's Canvas who graciously provided the awesome canvas that I used in today's video. And most of all, thank you for painting with me every week. I'll see you next time.